This is how I finally learned front wheel hops, and today I'm gonna to teach you everything I know. This is the trick that took me 20 years to learn. It wasn't because it was an insanely hard trick, although it is challenging. I had convinced myself that I couldn't do it and that I didn't need it. And so I basically ignored this one trick for the last 20 years of my trials riding career. The thing is, I never really felt like the front hop was holding me back. I could do a couple of them at a time and I didn't really need them or use them in demos or competition or anything like that. The main reason I didn't dedicate any real time to learning it was because I had so many outstanding questions about what to do and I felt like I shouldn't even waste my time working on it until I had the answers to all of those questions. But after a while, I just kind of felt sheepish to ask anybody about it because I've been riding for so long and I hadn't figured it out for myself. I have a feeling that for a lot of you here, that might be the same reason why you haven't spent time with front hops. And so today I'm gonna to run you through everything that I've learned throughout this process. I'm gonna to try to answer every single question, give you all the nuances and details so that you can start dedicating time to it. Because I can tell you, after I started dedicating time to put this together, I learned it in about five or six sessions, about four or five hours total. So it's easily within your grasp. It's just a matter of having all the information and knowing what to spend your time working on. Like I said, I didn't even wanna start working on this move until I had every single piece of information I could possibly get about it. And so I've got like 15 or 16 different points to tell you, and I've broken it up into three sections. So we're gonna talk about the basics, we're gonna talk about the move, and then we're gonna talk about some tweaks. And all of this stuff is gonna kinda of work together to give you everything you could possibly need to know about hopping on the front wheel. Let's get into the basics. The first thing, and maybe the easiest thing to do, is to rotate your brake lever is just a little bit more horizontal than you'd normally have them. And the specific reason for that is that it just lightens the load on your wrist. If you're reaching underneath your handlebar while you're hopping on the front wheel, there's just a lot of extra strain happening here. So the more you straighten that out and make it a little easier on your wrist, the better. Your wrists are gonna be under a lot of pressure while you're learning this, especially in the beginning. So the more you can do to help it out, the better. I do the same thing when I'm teaching people how to hop on their back wheel. We adjust where the brake lever is to make it easy once you're in the final position. And then after you get it, then you can put it back to your normal position or maybe find a new place to put those brake levers. Speaking of brakes, the next tip that I would give you is to always hold on to that front brake. So here's the thing, you're learning this, you're up on the balance point and you decide it's time to come back down and if you let go of that brake before you back off the balance point that front wheel can shoot underneath you and put you way over the bars and that's no good so make sure you're holding on to that front brake the entire time this next one's gonna sound kind of funny but don't hold your breath a lot of people when they go up into that endo position on the front wheel they take a deep breath and hold it and that's not gonna work out so great for you because this trick isn't like a gap or a side hop that's over in a split second you're gonna be up there for a while and you're gonna run out of air this was actually one of the hardest habits to unlearn as I was learning this trick. I kept holding my breath when I'd get up onto the front wheel and I would just run out of energy because I wasn't breathing. So remember to breathe. Maybe you don't wanna wait 20 years to learn how to hop on your front wheel like I did, and I don't blame you at all. I fully support that. If you're just getting started riding, let's go through a quick refresher of how to get up onto your front wheel and how to do a front hop. Then we'll go deeper into the technique and some tweaks. Here we go. The first phase of getting up onto your front wheel is what's called an endo. There's a full endo tutorial on this channel if you wanna really lock in on what that is. And essentially, getting up to the front hop position is just doing the maximum level endo that you can possibly do. So we're gonna roll along at a slow pace, we're gonna grab a bit of front brake, and we're gonna let our back wheel come up off the ground. We're gonna put our shoulders and chest over the bar just a little bit, and we're gonna use our back foot to scoop the back wheel up into the air. All of those things are gonna make the back wheel come higher in the air than they normally did. If you did none of those things and only grabbed your front brake, your back wheel would come off about a foot in the air. The more you apply what you're doing with your chest, your shoulders, and your feet, the higher the back wheel is actually gonna come up in the air. And that's a basic endo, which is gonna get us into that front hop position. As you're up onto that front wheel and getting ready to front hop, you wanna be in kind of this attack position. Your knees are bent and your arms are stretched out in front of you with just a little bit of a bend in the elbow. Now the steeper that you are over the front wheel, the easier this whole movement is gonna be. And that's what we're gonna get into in this video. But essentially what you're gonna to need to do to create the front hop, you're gonna dive into the handlebars just a little bit and you're gonna push away from the handlebars. That little pop 
is what's going to give you that first hop. And you're going to use your back foot to scoop up and you're going to push away from the handlebars at the same time so your legs and your arms are pushing away from the bike and that's going to bring the bike up off the ground. That's the basic motion of the front hop. We're going to talk all through the details and one of the most important things you're going to learn today is that this move actually gets a ton easier the steeper you are. If you're having trouble with anything on the front hop, likely it means you're not steep enough and we'll talk about that in full detail today. We're going to get to the nuts and bolts of this move very quickly, but I want to say one more thing and that's dedicate some actual chunks of time to this. So I had it actually as my New Year's resolution that I was going to learn how to front hop. And I figured if I just hopped on my front wheel 20 times a day every single day, it would eventually click all of a sudden. But that didn't happen. It's October and I'm finally getting around to doing it. And it only took me four or five sessions, maybe like five or six hours total of dedicated practice and doing all the things that we're about to talk about. But you know, I made it 20 years of my career thinking that eventually it was gonna click and it never actually did. So don't get away with thinking that, oh, eventually I'll be able to front hop and it'll just come along whenever. It's not gonna happen until you fully commit to that four or five hours to really locking it in and going through what we're about to take you through. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna go deep into all of the details of the technique that I've put together. The first thing we're gonna talk about is how to get up onto your front wheel. And there are three separate ways that you can do it. Now, one thing I wanna say is that there's no right or wrong way of these three. You should learn all three and not get stuck on one of them. What you should start with though is the one that's easiest for you to repeat because so much of what you're about to do learning this is just straight up repetition. The easiest way that I found to do it was to roll with just a little bit of momentum to get my front wheel up. It made it easier to do this over and over again because I was carrying a little bit of momentum kind of endo style into it. The next way is to do it from an exact standstill up onto the front wheel. And the third way is to do it with your back wheel already on something so it's like halfway there. So those three ways are how you would potentially start it. There's no right or wrong reason. And again, I think you should go back to doing all three of them, but start with the one that's the easiest for you to repeat without wearing yourself out. Now here comes some hard truth. You are not getting as steep over the front wheel as you think you are. There's two ways to start figuring this out. The first way is to go past the balance point on the front wheel until you have to put your feet down. You're gonna realize as you go past the balance point just how far you can actually go before you jump off. This is terrifying at first, but once you get a feel for that, you realize how much further you go before you have to take your feet off the pedals or before you go over the bars. This is a really important point because you have to go past the balance point before you can find it. The reason why you've been stuck this whole time is that you haven't gone up to the balance point perfectly yet, and that's what's holding you back. The next thing that helped me out a ton was thinking about hopping on my front wheel the same way that I think about hopping on my back wheel. The way that you would teach someone to hop on their back wheel is to hop backwards at first because they're pulling that back wheel underneath their balance point and readjusting. So why not do the same thing with your front wheel? Get up onto your front wheel and then pull the front wheel back and put it underneath you so it's at your balance point and then do that again and do that again. It's a great way to keep finding the balance point hop after hop. This is also the most common move that you're going to be doing as you're first really getting consistent with your front hops. You're gonna be pulling that front wheel underneath you because when you're learning it, your back wheel is actually dropping quite a bit. And so the more you pull it underneath you, the quicker you get back to that steep position over the balance point. Once you're up on the front wheel, you wanna think about, well, where do I look? And for me, I'm looking about three inches ahead of the contact patch of my front wheel. For me, it makes it seem like I'm not as steep because I'm looking ahead. I'm not looking straight down and realizing how steep I am over the bike. And that helps keep my body in that really steep position so I can stay over the balance point. One thing you might notice if you've watched other riders riding on their front wheel is that their face is actually in front of that front tire. So they're looking ahead of the bike when they're up in that position. The next thing you might be thinking about is what to do with your pedals and your cranks. And one thing that I've been playing with a lot is actually the position of those. So usually when you go up on the front wheel, you've got your pedals at kind of a level position. The thing I've been doing a lot lately is pushing them forward just a little bit as I go up onto the front wheel. 
And what that does is gives me a little bit more leverage when it comes to scooping with my back foot. So instead of rocking up with my feet level, I'm actually pushing them just a little bit forward. That way when I get over the front wheel, I've got a lot of opportunity to pull that back wheel up. Going further into what I'm doing with my feet, I'm scooping that back wheel up and that's helping lift the bike. If you watch anybody who's doing front hops, you see their knees and their hips moving up and down. But the weird thing is I can't actually feel my knees or my hips moving when I'm doing this movement, although they clearly are. All of the stuff that I feel like I can control is actually kind of in my upper body. I don't know if that's actually even helpful or not, but I don't really feel like I can over exaggerate my knees and hips like I would normally tell someone to do. I feel like they're kind of just along for the ride. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that when you get to the front wheel balance point, the correct balance point, it actually gets easier. There's this point where once the back wheel is high enough, lifting the front wheel isn't as hard as it was when the back wheel was a little bit lower. And so I'm not working as hard to get this movement to go and I'm not really crushing myself to get the whole bike to lift off the ground. Once you get steep enough, it actually gets easier. There's this moment where it all makes sense. That said, I was watching the tutorial that the Useless Trials put together, and one thing he talked about was the pressure on your wrists and how you should be doing lots and lots of push-ups to get yourself all ready for it. Our buddy Jay Bank got us into the 60-day, 200 push-up a day thing. And I can't help but think that maybe that helped me out, especially with my wrist strength, especially with my upper body strength. It is quite a bit of strain on your upper body, especially when you're first learning this. I guess the whole thing is like, once you start learning something, you eventually become more efficient at it. But the first few sessions, I was absolutely crushed. Welcome to phase three of this whole thing. We're gonna talk about some of the tweaks that you're going to be making as you're refining this process. And we're also gonna talk about the 360 front hop and some of the considerations that you need to have. Now, a 360 front hop seems as easy as being able to just hop on your front wheel a lot of times with a little bit of a twist, but there are a few little nuances that make a big difference when you're trying to do this that you wanna keep in mind. The main piece of advice that I would give you as you're practicing your front hop 360s is to go back to the normal front hop just without turning about every five attempts. It's a good way to kind of refresh everything. It breaks things up and it also gets you locked in again with that front wheel balance point. Once you've got so much going on with both the turning and the front wheel hop, it's easy to forget where that balance point is and let the turn take over. And it's important to come back to the start, get that balance point locked in, and then start working again. It's just nice to break things up. This one really helped me out a ton. Probably the biggest mistake that I've made over the years is that I thought that I could front hop and so I just immediately went into the 360 and I would never make it past 180. And I kept running into this wall and it was because I was not actually at that balance point. And so when I take those breaks every five attempts, it helps me re-engage with exactly how steep I need to be. When you're doing the turn and the front wheel hop, it's really easy to misplace your front wheel balance point and that's where I was messing up. The biggest unlock for me when it came to front hop 360s was understanding how my back wheel and front wheel work together. So I'm using my back foot to slowly push my back wheel around in the 360 when I'm up on the front wheel. But when I push on my back wheel with my back foot, it drops ever so slightly with every single turn. And the whole reason why you do front hops is that you're replacing your front wheel under your balance point. And so what I had to understand was that although my back wheel was dropping with each turn, I was able to lift my front wheel up and put it back underneath my balance point. And so it's kind of this interplay between your back wheel dropping a little bit, your front wheel bringing you steeper again, and putting those two together is kind of how you're rocking and putting yourself into that front wheel balance point repeatedly. So it's not like you lock into your balance point and you stay there and your back wheel rotates around it. Understand that your back wheel is dropping just a little bit every time you turn, and you have to keep on top of that balance point with every single hop. Every front wheel hop is doing its job to keep you over that balance point. Once you understand how those two pieces fit together, getting around the 360 kind of unlocks. Remember that when we were working on the regular front hops, we were filming ourselves to check our form and see how steep we actually were versus how steep we thought we were. This is also important when you're doing the 360 because you're gonna see about the halfway point, you're gonna be dropping down a lot more than you think you have. And so making sure that you're still filming yourself, you're still checking in on your form. I kept getting caught at about the 180 mark and I was doing 
doing the exact same thing every single time until I film myself. That has helped me out time and time again, especially for this trip. I really need to shout out the guys who stuck with me on the live stream through this whole process. It was a lot of patience on both sides of the screen, I'm sure, and it took way more than one or two sessions to get this locked in, but they were so helpful when it came to helping me address my form and giving me feedback on the fly to get to where I am. And because of that, we're able to share it with you now. I also wanna thank the Useless Trials. His tutorial video on front hops was what got me feeling like maybe I could get this trick locked in. And a lot of the stuff that he said in his video influenced where I went with the way I learned this technique. I'll link that one below if you wanna go check it out. Those are all the things that helped me really lock in this front wheel hop. And I hope it's given you the confidence to go and dedicate some time to it as well. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, now might be a good time to do it because I have a feeling that there are a lot more front wheel based tutorials coming up. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.